No, Helen, I promise. I'm not gonna dangle you off the Gallagher stand again. And I didn't like it, I promise. Are we recording? Are we on? Right. Hello, welcome back. So another video about St. James's Park expansion in particular, the Gallagher Den, which I've covered quite a few times. It's in light of a um, kind of a graphic design done by a lad called Barry Carr, which he circulated on Twitter a few weeks ago. I've been in community, well, actually he got in touch with me just recently, we've had a conversation. He actually done that um, kind of illustration and design based on what I've been talking about with the Gallagher Den. And I've asked him to make some tweaks so I can show you in this video, possibly, what the Gallagher End um, could look like with um, a cantilever stand over the road. So in this video, we're going to talk about that and answer a couple of questions. It's coming up. Welcome back, it's Eddie here from Tyneside Life. So a little update for you. So as you know, if you watched a, a video I did a, a week or so ago, I did a couple of Freedom of Information Act requests. One to Newcastle United, the other one to Nexus. I've been trying to find out how much Newcastle United paid for Strawberry Place behind me here. I've hit a bit of a dead end with that. I don't think I can take it any further. Uh, so the short answer is I don't know. But I submitted a secondary Freedom of Information Act request to Nexus about kind of the history of Strawberry Place land from about 1998. So I've got a timeline now. They have responded. I've got a timeline of um, how this land has changed hands since about 1998. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a separate video. I'm going to do the history of this land, Strawberry Place, from around about the medieval times up until around about today, uh, which I'm really excited about putting together. So um, if you want to see that video, if you want to get a notification when I release that video, make sure you hit the subscribe button. So back to the main part of this video, a couple of things I just want to establish. First of all, this is an opinion video. Of course, I don't know what Newcastle United have got planned or what they're gonna do. I have developed my own opinion by the own research I do. Um, so I should say that, you know, I'm a lay person. Um, I'm not an engineer, I'm not an architect, and I'm not an expert in these matters, but I do liaise and communicate now and again with, with one or two engineers. Uh, with one or two architects and with one or two town planners. So I have a fair idea of uh, where this might be going. Of course, nobody knows where Newcastle United are going to take this. Of course, I bought um, Strawberry Place land here. So this is an opinion video uh, based on all these sorts of factors that I've been finding out, putting together, plus my own personal research into bloody noisy paramedics doing there, man. My own personal research into um, not just looking at this through the eyes of a Newcastle United fan, but through uh, history and heritage and through conservation and environment and through town planning and transport infrastructure of Newcastle. So I, I can get as, as best I can a kind of a, a rounded idea of uh, what might be happening with this place. So in light of all that, my opinion is based on all things considered, that when the time is right for Newcastle United, and you're probably looking for, could be five years, once they've built their world-class training facilities somewhere, once we're established as a team that's uh, regularly competing in the Champions League, when they're ready to turn their attention into expanding the Gallagher end, it's my belief that they're probably gonna build a cantilever stand over the road, uh, a bit like the, the Sir John Hall stand and the Milburn stand into this area here, and build up as you can see in the diagram that Barry Carr has kindly provided build up the um, the southwest corner over there as well and probably expand it by I don't know eight or nine thousand taking it up to anywhere between 60 to 62 thousand of what it is now a couple of things I want to cover and um, because a lot of people um, shout out immediately that we had on there's a metro station there the tunnel right, runs actually directly underneath where I'm standing now and they can't possibly bring over the, the cantilever stand for the, uh, the pillars to go down into the ground where the tunnel is. Of course, that is a complication, but certainly from the conversations I've had, it's not a deal breaker. There are the abilities, technical abilities now to strengthen the tunnel and the station so that these pillars can go in without um, causing any disruption, so that is possible. In relation to the road, of course, that's council. It's a council road paid for by the taxpayer. Newcastle United have no control over that. They will have to get permission. I don't see any problem with that, certainly in the conversations that I've had. I mean, look, I mean, Newcastle United aren't going to put a planning 
application in on the Monday, it's not going to be accepted on the Friday and start building the cantilever stand on the following Monday. This is going to take a long, long time. It's going to be complex. But the message I just want to get across is that with the, the diagram that you're looking now, um, it's entirely possible and probably entirely feasible. It's my opinion um, that if it's not very similar to the design that you're looking at right now, I don't think I'm far off. Also as well, it's the drone that you're looking at isn't an architectural drone, so it shouldn't be, you shouldn't look, at, look over it with too critical an eye. It's, a, it's an illustration to give you an idea of what an expanded uh, Gallagher end would probably look like. Uh, what I particularly like, I asked Barry to make a couple of little adjustments, is have some steps coming up from Strawberry Place into the area of the Gallagher stand, a bit like it used to uh, when I used to start going to the matches when you had these huge concrete stairs with the horrible stinky toilets going up, up, into, the, up into the open Gallagher end. So I think, yeah, there'll be, I think, some some stairs going up into the back of the Gallagher, uh, and the land behind the Gallagher stand, all the land that will be left, could be utilised for a huge fan zone, a huge family engagement and entertainment area, a bit like what in the US they call it, like tailgate parties, where there'll be... Uh, or you'll get a kind of similar idea when they have the rugby magic weekends here. Uh, things for the kids to do, you know, taking penalty kicks, there might be little blow-up five-a-side five pitches for the kids. Um, and all sorts of gazebos and stands for food and alcohol. Uh, so you can just just imagine it on, on match day, the, it'll be buzzing. They could have in the, the Gallagher stand, which will come right out, that could be actually be a hotel, which will um, take advantage of and exploit other commercial opportunities. Over this side as well, you've got the Jackie Milburn statue. That, of course, will, that shouldn't be interfered with in any way. So what this doesn't include is what's going to happen down the east stand um, and the houses just over there because that's really co quite complicated. They're, they're private dwellings. Then you've got Lisa's Terrace, which is a Grade 1 listed building. That's a separate subject which I've talked about to death and I've uh, wrote an article about it on my website as well. If you're in, talking about my website, I've, done a, I've wrote uh, an in-depth article about the highly unlikeliness of St James's Park being relocated and I've went into a lot of detail and depth about why I don't think that's uh, going to happen. Um, not least because now we know that um, Newcastle United can't just do it off their own back because they think it's more um, commercially viable for them. Decisions like that have to be run through the, the football fan base through a pool, so it'll go with the majority of fans. That's law, that's FA law. Um, a bit like the heritage assets, which I've talked about in a previous video. Fans of the club are going to be at the heart of the decision-making of what's going on here. Uh, my feeling is that the majority of fans would prefer, even if it's a little bit higgledy-piggledy, they prefer the St James's Park to, to stay here. But that's just my opinion. So, yeah, so I just thought I'd give you an updated video about um, expansion, about the Gallagher end, um, of what I think, in my opinion, um, things will look like in four or five years' time when they start looking at expand, expand the Gallagher end. So, um, anyway, that's the end of the video. Let me, what, let me know what you think in the comments below, and if you like it, give us a thumbs up. Till next time, I'll catch you later.